What to do about mercury dental fillings? To be perfectly clear, mercury is toxic. It's a poison. One of its main symptoms is cognitive impairment, including memory loss. Mercury can also induce the characteristic amyloid beta plaques and neurofibrillary tangles seen in the brains of Alzheimer's patients. It also damages the antioxidant glutathione, which limits our ability to handle free radicals. So there are many reasons to stay away from this dangerous substance. And this isn't even really new. The effects of mercury were known throughout history. Mercury toxicity resulted in the phrase, mad as a hatter. Mercury was used in the manufacturing of felt hats during the 19th century, causing a high rate of mercury poisoning among those working in the hat industry. This, of course, was later immortalized in Lewis Carroll's classic, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Now, there are two forms of mercury that can harm us, organic or methylmercury, which can be found in fish, and this will be the topic of another video. Inorganic or metal mercury can be acquired from handling all those old mercury thermometers, but today the greatest risk is from the metal in certain fillings in our teeth. Now, how do we know if we have mercury exposure and possible early toxicity? There is a blood test but because mercury tends to migrate to other tissues, such as bone and brain, the blood test may not be positive. It's thus possible to have mercury toxicity without increased blood levels. But if the blood level is equal to or greater than five micrograms per liter, then there is mercury toxicity. If the blood levels, however, are below that, there still could be toxicity for the reasons mentioned. The current most sensitive mercury test uses a combination of blood, urine, and hair to make the determination. And it reports both inorganic and methyl mercury levels separately. So it helps us determine the source. It's called the Mercury Tri Test from a company called Quicksilver Scientific. Now, people of a certain age may have amalgam dental fillings. Dental amalgam is an alloy of copper, silver, tin, and zinc combined with about 50% mercury. Look in your mouth. And, and look for the characteristic dark appearance of the amalgam fillings. Note, some amalgam may be hidden below a crown. So just because you don't see any amalgam doesn't mean it's not there if you also have dental crowns. Each amalgam filling can leak up to 10 micrograms of mercury per day into circulation, according to some reports. Now, to be perfectly clear, experts don't agree about the toxicity of mercury due to dental amalgam. For example, the Alzheimer's Association states that, quote, according to the best available scientific evidence, there is no relationship between silver dental fillings and Alzheimer's, unquote. Others are not so sanguine. Some studies do show a relationship between dental amalgam and mercury levels, and others do not. However, since mercury is a known toxin, <clears throat> we are taking an aggressive position here. If mercury is abnormally high or unexplained cognitive impairment is present, then we'll take action. The relationship between the amount of mercury and the number of amalgam fillings is not really very straightforward. For example, the total mercury detected in tests is not related to the number of amalgams, but rather to the surface area of the amalgam. 
Also, some amalgams tend to leak more than others. So what should we do? Well, here's rule one that I think everyone would agree on. First of all, don't get any new amalgam fillings. Now, most dentists don't use them today, except for certain situations, if at all. Then here's our approach for dealing with amalgam fillings that are already in place. If I had cognitive impairment that wasn't responding to any other treatments, then I would remove all of the amalgam fillings. If there is no cognitive impairment, then it depends on how concerned I was. If I was not very concerned at all, then I would really do nothing. On the other hand, if I was concerned, then I would get one of the mercury tests, either a serum mercury test for about 30 to $60, or the more sensitive tri test for about $285. If they were normal, then again, I would do nothing. If, however, the serum mercury is above five micrograms per liter or the tri test is above 50% and I had excluded all of their sources for mercury, such as seafood, then I would definitely have the amalgams removed. Now, note, amalgam removal is not straightforward. The greatest exposure risk to mercury with amalgams is when they are first put in and when they are taken out. So removal can expose us to additional mercury. So it's really best to have this done by a dentist in this experienced in this area to, to really minimize the exposure. Typically what happens, uh, one or two amalgams are removed at each appointment until they're all gone. So what to do about mercury fillings? The area is still co very controversial and experts do not agree. But first of all, I would not have any new fillings with the, su the substance. Then, for the existing fillings, if I had either unexplained elevated mercury levels in my body or blood or unexplained cognitive decline, I would definitely err on the side of caution and have them removed. Thanks for listening. Note, this is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking of it because of something you have seen here. If you find this to be of value of you, please hit that like button and subscribe to support the work we do on this channel. Also, we take your suggestions and advice very seriously. Please let us know what you'd like to see on this channel. Thanks for watching and we we'll hope to see you next time!